Hey everybody, Todd Bettenhausen back with part 5 of my 3 projector sim racing cockpit build. I guess we'll call it part 5A and 5B because I'm going to do one video now while it's still pretty bright in here showing the construction and I'm going to do another video later showing some driving. But I'm going to take this opportunity to, to say a few words or probably more than a few words about some of the hardware I've chosen and assembled, why I did a few things the way I did, some of the details that I left out in previous videos and then we'll do some driving later. So let's talk about the projector mounts first. They're powder coated aluminum. I think it's 080 or 090, I don't recall, but they're bolted right to the wall with drywall anchors and I've simplified how they're mounted. I only need this silicone spacer on one corner. The way the projectors balance they're just hanging by the other two fasteners. That gives me really good control over leveling and aiming. You can see there are oblong slots here and here. The one near the lens is a hole, so I can swing that thing left and right, aim it up and down and level it with the three fasteners provided uh, for ceiling mounting via any C-zone mounts. Come over here. This one's mounted in a fixed location. Those are three holes. So you would set this projector up first, level it, set the picture size as appropriate, align the cockpit to that, then line up the other two projectors. Now again, these are four to three projectors. They're NEC NPV260Xs. They're 1024 by 768 DLPs. Uh, it sounds like a low resolution, but for iRacing, it's, it's not. It looks very good from the driver's seat. So we have three 40 inch diagonal 1024 by 768 images. They're 32 inches each wide and 24 inches each high. And they meet essentially seamlessly. We'll take a, a close look at that here in just a second. But just for completeness, we'll walk around here and we'll look at the, the left hand projector mount. It's mounted to two walls. So again, the design's a little different. All three are, are unique and they place the projectors in exactly the right place for a 67 inch throw distance from each lens to the center of each screen. All this stuff is made out of 80-20 structural framing material. The screen frame is 10 series which is one inch square. Those are quarter 20 fasteners. They're flanged button heads, the standard item that that 80-20 sells and the cockpit is various pieces of 15 series. Some of it's square, inch and a half by inch and a half, others is three inch by inch and a half, and the tallest piece up there up front where the pedals are is four and a half by an inch and a half. Here's my PC down below and my amplifier. That's a four channel ADCOM GFA 2535 amp for SimVibe. We don't have SimVibe or the seat hooked up right now because it's pretty hard to make a video about how things feel, but I'll go ahead and talk about those a little bit. There's my uh, uh, Z5500 subwoofer, one of those old vintage Logitech audio systems. Pedals here, um, these were made by Niels Husingfeld. They're his HE Sim pedals, uh, rather extreme high performance set of pedals. They have load cells on all three pedals, that large 200 kilogram load cell on the on the brake pedal there in the center, and also a load cell on the throttle and the clutch that that report their position to your driving simulation software. While we're down here, we'll get a little closer look at the back of my PC. That's a Danger Den chassis. It's what they call the Mini Torture Rack 2. And that's a Z77 Sabertooth motherboard on there, a 3770K processor, a GTX Titan video card. There's an extra sound card, you can see it there on the right. That's a uh, an Asus Zonar DGX, I believe. And that's the, uh, the card that runs the sound for the games. SimVibe is connected to the onboard sound. You can see my amp here, two separate amps and one chassis. 
the amplifier A runs the front two shakers for SimVibe, left and right respectively, and amplifier B runs the back two. And no wiring cleaned up yet here, I guess I was just too anxious to drive, but you can see there's my, my center channel, and over here is my right and center and left channels. And the back channels are just, or back here, got that wrong looking through the viewfinder and not seeing too much outside the camera right now, but there's the back right, back left, left, again, center, and right. So location of those needs to be optimized a bit. We'll go around the, the and the wiring, of course, cleaned up. We'll go around the other side here, audio wiring. Has a better look at the front side of the PC. It has a single SSD drive, DVD drive. You can see the it's all SATA, of course. SATA cables there. There's my RAM, <clears throat> 8 gig. Um, very simple cooler. Um, that's a Dynatron K985. Really nice cooler, especially if you're building in a smaller case. Um, very quiet and very efficient. Um, you don't need a, a massive cooler unless you're going for big overclocks. Here we go with the better look at the HE SIM pedals. You can see that load cell in the middle of the frame there. That thing's just a monster. And he has very nice adjustments on these pedals. You can adjust the, the travel, the stiffness, the position left and right. They're just, each one is an individual module. They're bolted to this beam of 8020. Over here, I made a heel plate. A lot of custom sheet metal fabrication in this project. There's my heel plate. It's off center. And the reason is because you pretty much want the center line of the chassis to be somewhere between the, the brake pedal and the throttle pedal so that you can either left or right foot brake and heel and toe without this, the subject of much controversy, my center post here for my steering wheel. Believe me guys, you don't know it's there when you're driving. You don't even know it's there because it's in the right place. Go around the side, we'll look at the, the steering wheel. It's a T500 RS. And I have one of Sam Maxwell's really, really nice direct fit steering wheels mounted on here. That's a Momo Model 31 in 320 millimeter. I basically use that for everything except the formula cars. He does have paddle shifters and they're, they have a really, really nice action. And you can still use the big paddles for black boxes or in-car adjustments or whatever. I told you guys in an earlier video that the steering wheel would be quite close to the center screen and indeed that proved to be the case. But that does get me in the exact right position where my eyeballs are right about here when I'm driving. Now the seat's back on the sliders, but that's a full 179 degree field of view. And, you know, if you're used to a typical three monitor rig, you can see a lot more up and down with this. Because the three four to three displays combined have a combined aspect ratio of four to one three 16 to 9 displays combined have an aspect ratio of five and a third to one. So when we do the driving later, you'll see how much more of the inside of the car as you can see. I'll go ahead and show you my mounts for the T500. More custom sheet metal fabrication. steering wheel can be moved back or forward. Not much room to go forward unless I sacrifice some FOV. That's the way I planned it. You need big screens. Um, you need really big screens to uh, get a steering wheel to be properly between you and the center screen. 40 inch diagonal was the minimum size to get this T500 and its big housing between me and the screens and have a true 179 degree field of view. We'll talk about the seat a little bit. I've taken the cover off so you guys can appreciate the fine workmanship here that, that 
Pat Dotson has put into developing this GS4 G seat. Used to be called Ultra Force Simulations, Pat's company. He's now part of the Sim Experience group out of Ohio. So this is now known as the Sim Experience GS4. Beautiful piece of hardware. What is it? Well, it doesn't look like much, but it sure feels like a lot. These panels move in response to the telemetry from the sim, whatever sim you happen to be driving, and they simulate g-forces by pressing on your body as you're driving. Very effective. You can see on the back here, industrial quality power, power supply, much more robust than uh, you'd find on most PCs, for instance all your servos and if we look underneath here it was very important for cockpit ergonomics to get the seat as low as possible which I've done and how I did that was I made these intermediate mounting pieces that mount the seat to play seat slider set and you can see over here the front of the sliders are attached to this cross member which is attached to the main backbone of the frame. Now the reason I arrived at this type of frame design which is basically a high-tech play seat was for SimVibe optimization. SimVibe, if you're not familiar with it, again that's Sim Experience. They have software which derives chassis vibrations vibrations that would reach the driver through the controls, the pedals, the steering wheel, or the seat from the road through the chassis of the car and to those points where the driver's body can, can sense them and we will have a transducer, a base shaker on each corner of this chassis. That round thing under there is an isolation foot. Clark Synthesis makes the the shakers that I use, they look like little flying saucers, one on each corner. So, the reason I designed the chassis this way, as opposed to my first design that some of you saw, is that this is optimized for SimVibe. A shaker on each corner, one very sturdy backbone down the middle. So I don't think I've left anything out for now. Um, I think We'll wait for it to get a little darker, and we'll do some driving. Now, one thing, one thing I might do before I, before I sign off this portion, let me go ahead and bring up my menu and my projectors. Again, really cool remote control. Uh, it's, it's RF, so all three respond. But you can see the the precision with which I was able to align these, and the technically. Savvy will say, well, or the picky, I'm not one of those guys at all, will say, well, that's not really a seamless picture. Well, no, it isn't. I had to improvise. The screen material was bowing inward toward the driver enough to affect the intersection of the pictures. When you stretch it tight, I couldn't get a nice tight radius in here, so I fabricated these little aluminum pieces, one on top and one on the bottom at each corner, and that's a 1 16th inch vinyl coated steel cable. You can see a collar there with a set screw. There's one above and one below. And again, we'll walk around and I'll, I'll show you that if you look down now, you can see that that screen material, I almost got all the bow out, but not quite. But it doesn't affect the picture while you're driving. You can see that it's almost straight. Not quite. Um, there is a solution to that. Ex expensive. I may I may go this route eventually when when my finances recover from the destruction of any disposable income that I didn't have in building this thing. I'll go ahead and get some rigid rear projection material instead of this uh, this translucent, almost shower curtain-like material that I bought off eBay. Seller called Carl's Place. I bought all this material one piece for sixty dollars so that wasn't bad and it won't hurt to to do something even better when when my budget allows so 
I think that's about it for now. Forgive the mess. It'll ultimately be cleaned up, but it might be time to try to go qualify at Indy. So that's it for 5A. We'll see you for 5B. Maybe tonight yet. Yeah.